Hi guys, it's Tara. Welcome back to Tara's Take. So it's Inspire Me Day and I was thinking about autumn and something we could do that was fun and different, at least for me. I've never done this, so I thought I'd come along and do it with you guys. I did watch a couple of random videos. I didn't catch their names. I'll have to check my history. Um, I think I only watched one of them through and she wasn't working on autumn and she was also doing a fabric painting for clothing. Um, so what you'll need is a like a what I've got here is my towels I get from Walmart and I've just torn them down into pieces about yay big you know um like six I don't know six or five by five it's just just a square or a rectangle you know you can use a scarf you can use a sheet anything you want to use if you're going to use it for clothing though um, I would use, you have to use a 100% cotton and um, you're going to need to work with a textile medium that will soften the paint uh, on the fabric. Also you'll want to treat the fabric prior by washing it. If you're using a thicker cotton you'll want to wash it a couple of times. Um, I learned that from her. <laughs> But I've already been working this morning. I made this. And I just wanted to come along and make a couple more of these. And I thought I'd do it with you guys. And we don't have to do fall theme. I had these leave stamps. And I thought that that was sweet for for fall. I may order some pumpkin stamps and some other things. You know, like maybe some animal things. I, I don't have any of those. This is the closest I came to fall. So what I did here was... Um, you can use acrylics and watercolor to do this. I have a piece of parchment paper, a nice big fat uh, paintbrush that I was using. Um, I'm not being exact, but of course if I want to be, I can be because this is a watercolor paintbrush. It's a nice round brush. It's got a good point to it. Um, I have a thing of water to keep everything wet. Also, I have a spray bottle, which I'm gonna go ahead and spray my material. You can wet your material down, actually. I was thinking about it and just run it under the sink and squeeze it out because you're gonna want it nice and wet, uh, at least for this. We're gonna do um, a little watercolor and maybe mix it in with some acrylic. I have a paper plate here full of acrylic paints that are fall colors I was playing with and Hopefully this will work for me now. It was working for me before. We'll see. Um, now that you guys are with me, I hope it works again. And I, I'm not worried about the paint underneath or anything. I'm just going to do like a wash on here. And I've still got a little bit of paint on my brush, as I can see. Um, and then I have over here, I have my Kuretake. Kuretake? I don't know if I'm saying it right. Anyway, I have my watercolors, okay? you can get these on Amazon. I will try to remember to link it in the bottom of the description of the video. Uh, these are like, I think they're like $30 for the kit. I've had this for over a year now. I don't use it every single day, but I do use it enough that it was a good, it was a good purchase. I've only panned on a couple of them, um, you know, gone down to the bottom here on the pan like on this one and this one and that's just because I used it a ton uh, they've lasted really well so and they're a very very good paint that's what I used on this one I didn't use uh, I guess I used a little bit of just a wash a little brown I used some acrylic but because um, I already had it laying over here and I didn't want to waste it but these are watercolor okay so I'm gonna do basically a wash on top of this piece of material okay so I'm just kind of getting it extra wet because even after we start painting, we can um, we can wet it down more as we go, and that will keep it spreading out like a wash does in a regular you know watercolor painting. Uh, the wetter the surface it goes on to, of course, the better. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and use my my spray bottle and wet down my paints. I'm sorry you can't see them, but I only have so much space, of course, as you know. Uh, let's see, can I bring them in a little bit more? Let me see if I can just get these out of here. I was going to say I'd lay them down. They come right out, but my nails are not wanting to pull them out right. There we go. There we go. I got one started. Okay, so I'm going to use this one, which is number 32, and they don't correspond in English. you got to look on the box lid. 
uh, number 32 is red and then I used number 30, 31 which is cadmium scarlet okay it's like an orange red um, I used some sap yellow or yellow ochre I mean on this last one I'm gonna probably use it again I have a hair in there I can see it through my brush oh well um, and then I used also some of the Rose Matter Deep. That's this color here. I'm going to pull the brown in because I want to use the watercolor. It's Raw Umber Deep. Okay. And um, let me see. I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of green. I'm going to use the Sap Green. Okay. Just as, a, as another wash through I think just to make everything look a little bit different um, this is the first time I've used my watercolors with you guys huh and I'm not doing anything fancy I'm just doing something simple but okay so I think I'm gonna start out with my uh, ochre yellow ochre and all I was doing was brushing it across and as you can see it doesn't spread super good as you're doing laying it down However, when you dip your brush in the water, it begins to grab the paint and pull it into the cloth and draw it down so that it kind of has that fade that a wash has, you know. Okay. And on the first one I did, I just kind of was random and this time I decided I wanted to make sure I do my colors in the actual order I want them to kind of uh, appear, you know. So it grabs the paint, but you definitely have to make sure it's nice and wet. It's, it's uh, you know, it's definitely different than paper. <laughs> this is my first time ever painting on cloth like this and then after this we're going to adventure into stamping on top of the painting so that'll be fun and I've already done it so I know it works well and looks pretty cool and as you can see I'm I'm just making mine this is totally up to you I can't even stress how much I'm not planning this out. So if you want your lines wider, if you know much more about watercolor than I do, Miss Gina, <laughs> um, you know, please feel free to leave me notes and hints and, uh, and feel free to do it however you want. I'm just making a nice fall looking wash. Um, I just want it to you know be fun and I mean I'm not using these for clothes either I wanted to stress that I am using these as a background as I probably will be putting in the title of the video I'm using these as a background that um, I'll put on like journal cards or even maybe make some flip downs in my autumn journal and um, so these are not 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 gonna be for me to wear if you are thinking, oh, that'd be fun to put on a t-shirt, you know, like I said, you'll you'll want to wash that t-shirt. You'll want to make sure it's treated. And if you do use stamping, um, make sure you heat that stamping and kind of set that ink into the cloth. Um, if, this, if the stamping goes through the cloth, that's all the better. That means it's setting in there. The paint as well means that it's really getting into the fibers. Okay, so if it goes from the front of your cloth all the way through to the back, you know, on the inside, that's a good thing. Um, yeah, so, but if you're just doing it like me for some fun in your, your autumn journal, then just have a good time. I'm going to add in some of that green. I know it's probably going to be kind of weird. I just wanted, you know, what I should do is mix a little bit of the brown in here because I want this to be kind of dark. I want it to be a deep, deep, mossy kind of green. I know that red does not jump into green, but I just think it'll look fun. <laughs> okay, I told you, no rhyme or reason. Don't don't go by my my thing on here. Just I'm just doing it with you. 
because I wanted to play and like I said I don't want to do it by myself and then have something really cool happen and be like oh no I've got to figure out how to do that again <laughs> I also find, you know, I was kind of mentioning about Tina the other day about how she is about her videos, and I kind of find now that if I've got like tons of stuff to do on other projects, but I know I want to make a video about a certain subject with you guys, and I've been thinking about this subject for a minute, so it's been a while that I've been like, oh, I need to paint on some cloth and make something fun. Um, am I in the video? Oh, okay. I'm just making sure we're in, we're in the frame here. Um, but anyway, I was thinking, you know, I, I've got other stuff I need to get done through the day and I'm kind of like, okay, so I'm going to jump on and make this video right now. Now, I won't want to be doing this particular project all day long because I have other things, you know, other projects I want to do. So that's also why I'm just bringing you along while I experiment and play. So, And I know most of you do not mind that because you guys seem to comment a lot that you enjoy the happy mistakes you enjoy you know the the experimentation um, as you can see the water is totally pulling the paper the, the fabric up so I'm liking the, the the progression and also I really like the fact that it's blending so nice I, I think that's really really cool so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try something I didn't try before so let's see I want to use because before I just went ahead and took my heat tool to it and this time I think I want to try and see something I want to see what this will do just pulling some of the color up with a cloth not even pulling the trying to pull the pigment up as much ooh but trying to dry it actually a little bit because it is super soaked um, you know if you do this with another cloth this would be a really cool I probably should have done that, huh? Um, let me see here. Do I have a piece? I don't want to use that piece. Let's use this piece. This is like a strip. I've probably already done it too much now. It's not going to go through. Yeah, I already did. I pulled up a lot of it, so. Now, you don't have to do that. I did that to kind of dry it a little bit. And also, I wanted to kind of lighten it just slightly. Okay, so now what I did was I used my heat tool and not that this is gonna dry it immediately, but it just kind of warms up the cloth a little bit because what we're gonna do next is I am going to stamp. Okay, so I'm gonna move these out of the way as I'm doing this. And then, um, kind of preparing the way for my ink and stuff because I do not have the space to, <laughs> as you guys know. My husband's so cute, he keeps talking about getting me a, a bigger kitchen and a, a craft room in our new place. That's the goal, guys. That's the goal. A bigger kitchen and a crafting room. <laughs> nothing for himself. Absolutely nothing. He says he'll put a couch in the craft room and watch TV in there to be with me. Because <laughs> he... <laughs> uh, he's sweet that way. He really means it, too. Okay, so it's not dry, but it's not soaking wet now. Okay? Now, what I did, like I did before, I'm going to use my leaves. I, I don't think I have really anything else that would look fall or autumn. Let me look here. I might have... I have these little guys, but these are all flowers. There's some leaves. I've got a couple of birds in there. But, yeah, I think I do have a little bumblebee here. He might. Are bumblebees in the autumn? Not really, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I told you guys I don't really do uh, seasonal journals. I mean, I never have because I'm new at this, so. This is my first year of doing seasonal journals. Can you believe it? I was telling one of you in the comments on our video, or either that or on our Facebook group, I'm not sure, um, but I was telling one of you that I actually finished the folio. I didn't finish it without you guys. I promised you I wouldn't. And so next Friday, or no, next Sunday, 
will be the final video for you guys to watch with me working on the folio. But I have done a flip through video that's going to be out um, sometime next week or sometime after that, like the week after, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it would be next week because I'm going to put that one out on Sunday. So it'll be sometime next week that I'll do the flip through video for you guys and you can see it. I totally changed it on the outside too. So I, I, I didn't end up really liking what I did on video. Um, as I got going on it after I was off video and finishing off what I had started. So I changed it again. So <laughs> see it. I don't want to ruin the surprise. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And then this has all kinds of really cute little sayings, but I don't know if they're very fallish. Let's see. There is beauty in simplicity. Never lose your sense of wonder. Every adventure is worthwhile. A different path doesn't make you lost. Collect beautiful moments and go where you feel most alive. I like those. Those are nice. Very nice. Um, okay. So I don't know if I'll use every single one. I kind of feel like these leaves really look fallish and then some of them don't. I don't know. Are there fallish leaves? You know what I'm saying? More, I don't know. Nice leaves that are from back home where I'm from. <laughs> that make me think of fall as a kid. Now I'm looking for my block. What I do with my block? Did I sit it? Okay, Tara, you just had it. Ah, here it is. All right, so now I have this. I really kind of like what happened here on this dry cloth. If I had known, I would have done it off on the regular material. That would have been cool. And now, where's my ink? All right, I found it. Look at that. Yay! <laughs> she actually found it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with this guy. And... I found that I needed to, because it's cloth, you will want to, at least in my case, you will, I found, you will want to hold it down pretty good and stay there for a second for the ink to really catch on the fabric. Um, yeah, there we go. And I'm also, I'm going to be doing them off the edges as well, like they're Kind of falling onto the material, you know. So, just so you know, let's see. I was doing them all around, upside down, right side up, to the right, to the left, every which way, just scattering them uh, around like that. I just thought this would be a lot of fun, as like I said, as a backdrop for. A journal in some way whether it's a part of a page or it's just on the back of a journaling card however you do it it'll be cute and if you use animal stamps or you use nature or insects you know all of it I really like the idea of, I probably will order myself, I just really don't have any, um, some little uh, autumn stamps, you know, that have a better selection of like pumpkins and stuff. So, I don't know, I might even order something, I don't have anything for Christmas either. <laughs> I would like to make, like, um a nativity type digital kit for Christmas and oops and then I also want to make wintry like one with snowmen and, and icicles and you know I might throw Santa in there um, but mostly I want to work on a nativity 
uh, kit and see if I can come up with something beautiful for everybody. At least for me to use. Because <laughs> I do want to, oh, I did those right together. I didn't mean to do that. I do want to do a Christmas themed journal this year. I did not do that last year and uh, I did participate in Tina's you know contest she had going for picking the theme of her digital kit um, I did not win <laughs> I, I of course I posted something about you know a Christian themed kit but it didn't win the one that won was beautiful though the Dickinson or Dickens themed Victorian style in blues and that turned out really pretty but because I didn't do a Christmas journal I did not purchase that kit only because I didn't do a Christmas journal not because of the kit or anything because it was gorgeous as you can see I'm just kind of randomly and you can use a different color ink I just thought the black showed up really well um, I guess it like a dark brown would show up good too if you had it oh and also I'm using archival ink from Ranger I'm not using um, a distress ink because of course we're working with watercolor and I don't want it to run um, the other, I don't know if I mentioned, when you do this, if you're using these for clothing at all that's going to be washed in the wash, you'll want to treat your ink as well by heating it before you put anything on it, um, by running your heat tool over it and treating it, you know, uh, I know that works to make sure that it stays on the cloth. Okay. little details little details oh and also oh I did mention the textile medium the textile medium the reason you need that in case anybody doesn't know um, is because you want your paint to be flexible if you're wearing you know if you're gonna be wearing this stuck on it I didn't hold that down long enough um, yes I'm gonna double stamp oh boy um, but yeah if you're gonna be wearing it at all you're gonna want it to be a flexible cloth so the the textile medium will do that for you okay it'll make it move not too bad so yeah and it's you can get it I just I bought some on Amazon um, for less than five bucks for a small one I I didn't get a big one but I have it just in case you know um, yeah I'm going to take some of this off the edge. I hope you guys like this. I kind of thought it was cute. Let me do this side. I'd really like to try it with um, maybe some Paris theme or and some different backdrop colors. I thought that would be pretty. I have a lot of those stamps, you know, different stamps with kind of vintagey fun stuff on them. So I was thinking about trying that as well. Let's do this little guy. I'm going to wipe this off. I've got it all over the edge. I'm going to make a mess on mess. I've made a mess on myself already, but You can even, I mean, you can overlap your leaves if you want and make them like they're flying all over each other. You know, be creative. Don't, don't do it just like mine, of course, because you, I, as many of you have shown me when I, when I show you something and then you post what you've made with my idea of the backdrop, but your creativity with it, you far outshine what I, what I did, and I'm very, very impressed by you guys. So serious. There's some stuff I go, oh, I never, I didn't think of that. That would have been cool on there, you know, or that would have been a cool way to do it. Um, yeah, so we've all got different ideas and just let your, let your imagination explode on, on the cloth, on the page, you know, let's 
see. Okay. And I'm going to do one last one, this little guy here. I'm going to kind of stamp him around in between some spots, fill in some places. Kind of look like I need one more thing right through here. Yeah, I'll have to figure out which one I want to put there. Kind of have him over here. I was getting in the habit earlier of like keeping my block the same direction and when I realized I started turning just just switching my block and kind of making it habitual to do that as I was stamping so I wasn't putting him in the same direction all the time the, the stamp in the same direction the whole time um, let's see okay I want to put something right there let's see what would look good this little guy will look good right here I think because I don't have one of him right anywhere near and he's one of my favorites I like this stamp I think he's really pretty so we're gonna go right there okay hopefully I did it dark enough yeah so there's my second one how do you like it I wish like I said I wish I had more stamps to do more fall theme but this gives you guys a good idea um, let me see how how's this one doing it's getting drier and drier so that's good let's put them side by side so you can kind of see yeah it's drying up now I did like I said I did a little bit of acrylic with this one I did all watercolor on this one um, the lady I watched earlier she did acrylic and then watercolor on top of that what she was doing and she was doing like designing like scarves and shoes and hats and she was letting the watercolors just kind of come out of the flowers you know over the edges like you do when you're painting and and that's great I tried to do that on one with with this and it didn't really look as good so that's why I went ahead and tried the wash behind it and it made it you know I, I think it made it look better so for me at least in this project that's what I went I decided to go with okay um, you could come back in on top of these leaves, of course, and paint them uh, because the paint will go on, um, you know, thicker uh, also. It doesn't have to stay watery and, and spreading throughout the cloth. You can come back on top of this once it's drier and, you know, distinctly paint these leaves if you would like because I did do that on a couple of pieces earlier and it worked so um, yeah so that's our video today I hope you enjoyed it I know it's a quick one I don't usually do super quick but it's because I'm not decorating anything with them yet because they're wet and I'm not sure how I'm going to use them but I wanted to show you guys what I was playing with and what inspired me and how it ended up looking I hope you like it like I said this is on those towels from Walmart super cheap um, and so, you know, and it did go through to the back, so it's going to, it's going to stay. It's going to be, it's going to be good on there. Okay. So let me know what you guys did. Post it on our Facebook group and let me see your work. Okay. I love you. Be blessed. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you tomorrow.